Over the course of the past several months, I've been comparing aircraft head to head to see which aircraft is objectively better than its competitors. And the more comparisons I do of these aircraft, the more I realize what a difficult task it is to compare aircraft in general. You can't look at a single metric like thrust to weight ratio or payload capacity or speed because those are different capabilities for different aircraft. A C-130 doesn't need to be as fast as an F-22 does. But just because an F-22 is faster, does it make it a better plane? Not necessarily. And then you consider the fact that people have incredibly strong opinions about which aircraft is best based on their own personal biases and experiences. So I came to the conclusion that I needed to develop the ultimate aircraft ranking system. This system I've painstakingly developed over the past several months gets rid of all personal biases and preferences and looks squarely at metrics to determine which aircraft is best. So without any further ado, this is the categories for the ultimate aircraft ranking system. This was a successful unveiling. This system is broken into five different categories. Each of those categories will be assigned a score based on metrics of that category of one to 10, 10 being the best in that category. And those five categories are cost, speed, innovation, versatility, and effectiveness. And you'll notice that each category is only given a certain weight of the score because some of these categories are more important than others. For instance, I only attributed 5% of the total score to cost because sometimes militaries don't really care about the cost of things. But it certainly is a factor in the long-term longevity of a program. When assigning a score to the cost category, I first look at the cost of when it was purchased and then I use an inflation calculator to get the cost in today's terms. After I get this figure, I take this number and compare it to similar aircraft with similar capabilities in the same class. Next, we have the speed category, and the speed category takes up 10% of the overall score of the aircraft, and I use the speed when compared to similar aircraft in the same class in the same era in which that aircraft was developed. For example, it wouldn't be fair for me to compare an aircraft such as the P-51 to the F-22 because the F-22 was developed long after the P-51 and the P-51 was developed before the sound barrier was even broken. The next category is versatility. Versatility accounts for 30% of the aircraft's total score. An aircraft is scored in this category based on its ability to perform a variety of different tasks within its class. For instance, the F-18 Super Hornet scores excellently in this category because it can perform a wide variety of tasks. It can be a carrier-borne aircraft, it can perform attack rolls, bombing runs, and even air-to-air -air combat. Whereas certain aircraft such as the A380 do not score as well in versatility because they can only perform one set of tasks. The A380 cannot be converted into a cargo aircraft because of the way that it was designed. This drastically limits its capability as an aircraft in the commercial class. The next category is innovation, and it also comes in at 30% of the overall aircraft score. The innovation category of an aircraft basically means how much this aircraft advanced aviation as a whole. For instance, the SR-71 will score exceptionally high in this category because it pushed aerospace in such a dramatic fashion. The sheer amount of technologies that went into developing the SR-71 were absolutely astounding. And so innovation is very high in the SR-71. For the innovation category, we're gonna be looking at specific metrics such as range, thrust to weight ratio, fuel capacity, payload capacity, all of these specific measures that are good metrics for seeing how innovative that aircraft was when compared to similar aircraft in the same class. Another important aspect of innovation is looking at the technology that was developed for the aircraft or new technology that was implemented into the aircraft. For example, the F-117 was the first stealth fighter jet. This is an incredible example of innovation and reducing radar cross-section. And if you don't know what that means, make sure you check out my video all about stealth aircraft, right there. The last category included in this ranking is effectiveness. Effectiveness is pretty much what it sounds like. It's basically how successful an aircraft was. It's also important to note that the score of the effectiveness of this aircraft is only used when comparing other aircraft in its class. So some metrics that can help us gauge what the effectiveness score of an aircraft should be will be how many units were produced, 
how long the aircraft was operational, the combat record of an aircraft, and its overall durability. So no, I'm not gonna be ranking every single aircraft that has ever been developed in this video. But every time I discuss a new aircraft on the channel, I will be certain to assign it a new ranking if I haven't discussed it already, and it will be incorporated into the ranking. But fortunately, I have already started talking about aircraft, so I have a good grasp on the capabilities of certain aircraft that I've already ranked, such as all the US fighter jets, the A380 and the 747. And in my next video, I'm gonna be ranking all the bomber aircraft that are currently in operation, but I am gonna hold those out as mystery until you watch that video coming out soon. So without any further ado, we're gonna start at the bottom of our ranking today with the Airbus A380. And as I mentioned in a previous video, talking about why the jumbo jets are ending, the Airbus A380 was an incredible, innovative design. However, the program lost billions of dollars for Airbus the production line ended very prematurely. People stopped buying the aircraft a long time ago, and it's not even that old of an airplane. And even though it is the largest commercial jet to ever exist, it is certainly not the most effective aircraft. Next up on this list, again, we have a very innovative aircraft, but not a terribly effective one, the Harrier. And in 17th place, the F-5 Tiger II, followed by the A-10 Thunderbolt II, the F-18 Hornet, the world's first jumbo jet, the Boeing 747, the F-16 Fighting Falcon, and number 11, the F-15 Eagle sporting the best air-to-air -air combat record in history, followed by its younger brother, the Strike Eagle, and after that we have all three variants of the F-35, the Joint Strike Fighter, the Lightning II, followed by, on top of the list, the F-22, Raptor. Now, as I said, I'm going to be continuously adding to this list, and you can see the ranking every time I add one to the list, followed by its score on the right hand side. So, if you're not already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next video ranking all of the bombers currently in operation across the world. And in that video, I'll reveal how those aircraft stack up against these aircraft that I showed you today. So, are you interested in becoming an aerospace engineer? If you are, make sure you check out my Patreon where I give you all of the tips on becoming an aerospace engineer, including the one and only aerospace engineering job search tool. Or if you want a career consultation, you want to see behind the scene contents, join in on a monthly live Q&A, all of that and more is found on my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and Godspeed.